Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So if you watched the last video, then you will know that this one's gonna be about postpartum depression. Um, so this is my second time filming this because the first time I thought I was filming like regularly, I record on my iPhone. So um, I was not, I was recording in time-lapsed, which fast forwards everything. Um, and there's no way to undo time lapse with audio and it being smooth. So here we are. Um, so I dreaded this the first time and I'm dreading it even more this time just because whenever, like I like to be a happy person. Okay. I like to be in good moods, positive moods, um, and touching in or tapping back into this space. Is just full of like negativity um, now whenever I recorded it the first time I did not cry and I really hope I keep that same energy that G thug energy um, so we shall see this video is going to be about postpartum depression and if you want to hear my journey of how I navigated from the beginning to the end of this very difficult moment in my life Please keep watching. I'm just gonna take y'all all the way back. So a month before I was pregnant with my first full-term baby, I found out a month, am I even saying this right? Um, a month before that, I found out I was pregnant and I ended, up, I ended up miscarrying. So it honestly happened within a few, a matter of days to be honest. I found out I was pregnant took a pregnancy test. I bought cards um, to inform my family, my mom, my sister, my brothers. Um, and I told a few people. And then a few days after that, I started bleeding and I went to the ER and I had lost the baby. I don't know how far along I was. Um, I just felt empty. I felt sad. I felt like my one, my one job biologically as a woman was to make babies, make baby. Um, but I just felt like I couldn't. I felt like I was broken. I felt like this emptiness in me. I felt like a hole was in me and I wanted to fill that void, right? So subconsciously, and I feel like just a little bit consciously, I wanted to get pregnant. Um, it was just kind of like I just wanted to fill that void. I just want I just wanted to be like whole again, right? Um, and honestly, like when I talk about things, it, it's in it's in a matter of past tense. I don't currently feel that way now, obviously. Um, but also, it's just kind of like I'm just expressing to you what I felt in that moment. Even though it doesn't sound right, even though it sounds a little kooky, there's different, there's things in this, in this journey that I'm going to talk about that just are like, what the actual fuck are you talking about? Like, that doesn't make sense. I understand that, but I want to be completely transparent, honest with how I was feeling, what I was thinking just throughout. Okay. So I get, I get how crazy and silly it may seem, right? Anyway, so um, a month after we experienced that miscarriage, um, I remember the day after me and my boyfriend at the time went to go have brunch together. Um, and I just didn't want to think about it. Right. I didn't want to face what happened. And whenever I was by myself, I cried and I bled a lot. And every time I went to the restroom, it was like a constant reminder of what was currently happening right? Regardless of the situation or who I was around. Um, anywho, I was blessed the next month with another pregnancy and I got to carry her full term, actually a week longer than full term. She was born at 41 weeks. Um, and throughout my pregnancy, I wasn't experiencing depression. Me and my boyfriend at the time were not like, oh, it was just rocky. We argued and we had issues. Um, and I wouldn't say I was depressed. I just know our relationship wasn't in the best space. Um, and then whenever 40 weeks came and went, 
I was just like, okay, where's this baby at? Like, let's go, let's get it. Um, and being a first time mom, like during pregnancy, I didn't know what it felt like to go into labor. So I just didn't know. Um, I do remember throughout this pregnancy though, just being very, very scared all the time. I remember the beginning, uh, me, me and my boyfriend at the time took a trip to California and I didn't want to get in the ocean because I felt like the waves would hit my stomach and I could lose the baby. Again, I know that's stupid, but I was just so, so scared. I felt so fragile. I felt like my baby was so fragile and I needed to take care of it. So I wanted to be super safe, even though that meant missing out, being in the ocean or whatever it meant, whatever it meant for me in that space, right? Um, and it also even went to like whenever I told people I was pregnant and then just throughout the pregnancy, I was always scared. Like whenever I went to appointments, I, I would just be worried. Like, is there going to be a heartbeat? Is, is my baby healthy? You know, whenever they take your blood to check for ab abnormalities, like I was just like, is, is baby okay? So throughout that pregnancy, not only was my relationship just rocky, um, but I was also just so fearful of my pregnancy and being able to carry the baby full term and just every worry crossed my mind, right? So at 40 weeks, um, baby wasn't here. I was twerking. I was doing everything, bouncing on my ball. Like I was trying to like get my body going into like labor, like let's go. Like what are we waiting for? Um, and at 41 weeks, I kind of felt like this tightness around my stomach. And even though obviously when you are pregnant and you're in like your last, in your third trimester, your stomach is hard, but it was to the point where it was like, you couldn't even push anywhere along the stomach. And it was just really, really tight and really uncomfortable. Um, and of course being a first time mom, I didn't know what contractions felt like. I didn't know what going into labor felt like. All I knew was in the movies, right? Like like your water breaking and oh my gosh, it's all this commotion, right? Um, that was not the case for me. So whenever I felt that tightness, I called my OBGYN, the, the doctor's office, and they're like, okay, come in. So at this point I had like our bags ready, the baby's bag ready. I was just ready, right? We had everything already set up in our little apartment. And so we went, okay, I need to, I need to backtrack. So also during this pregnancy, I had a plan. Okay, so my plan was to bring in our baby naturally without an epidural, like just, I just wanted to do that naturally. I researched hypnobirthing, I read books, I had a playlist, I would meditate, like that's just what I wanted, right? So that was my plan. Okay, now, now, now we can jump back in. So whenever we went to the hospital, they're like, okay, so you are having contractions, they're mild contractions. Um, but let's just kind of see in case baby continues having control, you know, continue, like, is this baby coming, right? So we were in there a few hours. I wasn't dilated whatsoever. Um, my cervix was not soft at all. Like baby, like my baby was chilling, right? Well, then at one point the nurse came in and was like, okay, if we don't have any action soon, we're going to either, we're going to have to, you're going to have to get a C-section. And that is the complete opposite of my fucking plan, okay? Like, I wanted, I knew what I wanted, right? And that was not what I wanted. I did not want a C-section. So that just created this panic in me where I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And also before going in, I didn't want any Pitocin. I didn't want anything. Like, just let, let me and baby do our thing, okay? We were made for this, okay? Like, we got this. Um, so... Also, because this is my first baby, I didn't know how much power in the room I held. So I didn't know that I could tell her no. I didn't, I wanted us to be safe. I wanted my baby here. There's just so many different things playing in my mind. And I also like reflecting felt like I was very much so bullied whenever I was, whenever I was in labor with my baby, with, with uh, my first baby. Long story short, after she gave me those two options, have commotion or c-section i was like we gotta have some commotion okay and then that's when pitocin came in the picture so i was given pitocin and then contractions began happening and they started getting a little um more painful and more painful and they offered me the epidural i want to say like two or three times before i ended up getting the epidural yeah 
when I got the epidural, um, from my understanding in movies and all this other stuff, God, movies are so twisted. But from my understanding, it was just kind of like you would be numb from the waist down. Okay. And if you're a first time mom, if you're pregnant, um, that, that's not the case. Okay. I was numb from my neck down and I couldn't feel myself breathing and it sent me into an instant panic attack. Like as soon as they laid me back down from, you know, get putting the epidural in my back and laying me back down, I had a full blown panic attack where I really thought I was dying, you know? Um, and when they gave me the epidural, my mom and my boyfriend were outside of the room and they weren't allowed until I was done and the, and the anesthesiologist left. So it's just the anesthesiologist and a nurse there and they're trying to calm me. They put the oxygen mask on me and I just could not catch my breath. I could not breathe. Um, and at some point they allowed my boyfriend back in and he really just coached me and calmed me down. So I had three panic attacks throughout the whole time. And the second time was a few hours after I, um, I got the epidural. Um, the second one was from them saying the say, talking about C-section again, and that just completely freaked me the fuck out. Um, I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to handle how everything was just already going off off course than my plan. Okay, um, I do want to touch on plans at the at the end of this, but um, anyway, so. So the, the, I'm just hopping everywhere. So as far as the epidural goes, me and the anesthesiologist, you know, conversed about uh, me needing to feel something in order to feel like it's okay, if that makes sense. Like I need to feel like my chest and if I feel contractions, it's okay. Like, like I'm, you know, and it sounds weird to say that, but I needed to feel something. You know, um, so she turned down the amount of, of epidural I was, the medicine I was getting to the point where I, I had a little bit of control. Like if I was in pain, I could hit a button and it would drip some more. Um, but I'm not quite sure how she did it, but essentially like if it hurt too much, I could hit a button. And if I started feeling freaking out again, I could hit another button and it'd be, and you know what I mean? Like I had, I, said, I had a little bit of control of, of that. Um, anyways. Uh, long story short, I had three panic attacks and while I was in, in this, in labor or whatever you would want to call this, um, I threw up like multiple times, multiple times. Um, and from the, the moment I came into the hospital to the moment I actually had the baby was 36 hours. Okay. Now let's hop in, in the, in the middle. Um, so at six centimeters, um, dilated, I began to have a fever. Um, which can be a little bit common just because at this point, God, I'm hopping everywhere and I'm so, so sorry. My water finally broke and I was laying in bed and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm wet everywhere. Hell. Um, so they changed my sheet and when your water breaks, um, you're more prone to infection. Um, and of course when they check you, you know, it's like the gloves and it's just all these different things going on. Um, anyway, so I started getting a fever and even though they were watching that, they were also watching how much I was dilating and I was just kind of sitting at six for a while. So then they told me that we had to get a C-section because now if I'm getting a fever and the baby's heart rate, um, is going up, which is what happened. And now it's putting her in danger. It's putting the baby in danger. And of course we didn't want that. I didn't want that. Um, and so we all decided a C-section was best. Now I remember telling my mom, I was like, mommy, I think, I honestly feel like if I go in there to have a C-section, I'm not going to be alive. Like I'm not going to make it out. And she's like, no, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. And when they wheeled me into the OR, I did everything to keep myself from having another panic attack just because I really felt like that was the end for me. I really felt like I was gonna die on the in, in the OR, you know? I did not, hate to be a spoiler, <laughs> but I did not. 
Um, so anyways, we, you know, I have a C-section, baby comes out, she's healthy, she's beautiful, she's a big old chunk, um, and then I began trying to breastfeed her, um, and it just hurt so bad. Now, breastfeeding, some women take quickly to it, some babies take quickly to it, but not all, and if you're not one of them that take quickly to it, or if you're baby, it is okay, it is okay. I did not feel like it was okay in that moment. In that moment, it was so important to me to be like all these moms that I saw, you know, and and I wanted so badly to have that connection with that with my baby and breastfeed. You know, I did not want formula. I didn't even buy formula. Like all I had was my breast pump at home because I was so dead dead set on breastfeeding. Um, but it did not pan out. Um, we, I had lactation nurses come and coach me and I would try and I would try. Um, and I can't remember if we, I think we started giving her formula in, in the hospital, um, just because it hurts so bad. And you may think it's not that big of a deal. It's not, it doesn't hurt that bad. Well, that's great that you think that, but that's not how I felt. That's not how a lot of other women felt, feel. Um, and some of us can't get through the first few weeks of our nipples cracked and bleeding. Okay, we're human. Okay, um, and mind you, I was healing from a C-section and, and just so many other things. So back up if that's what you think, if that's how you feel. Um, so we went home, and again, I was I was pumping milk um, because breastfeeding hurt too bad, right? So I would pump. I would still try to breastfeed her. Um, and we were still doing formula as well, supplementing with for, with formula. And at some point, I went and saw another lactation consultant, nurse, lactation. I feel like they have a word, but I can't think of it right now. I'm just going to say nurse, lactation nurse. I went to a little lactation office where they coached me again and showed me. They gave me a nipple shield, um, and it still didn't work. So what I did was I would just pump. I would pump as much as I could and we would try to feed her that if I didn't make enough then we would supplement supplement formula and mind you I felt like shit I felt like a shit mom I felt like I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do what I was meant to do um, like I just felt like I was failing I was failing and I think that's why I just went in so hard about people that think it's not that big of a deal we carry a lot of guilt we do um, so um, even even through me pumping, I wasn't expressing all the milk I needed to, which created a clogged milk duct, which means mastitis, which led to me getting mastitis. Now mastitis is flu-like symptoms, and it was something I was unaware of at this point in time. So my boyfriend at the time was at a softball game, and I felt just sick. I was super, super cold. It was the middle of the summer. Um, and I had it 83 degrees in my apartment, in my little apartment. And I was just like, I'm not feeling too hot. Like this, like I don't feel good. So whenever he got home, I told him I was gonna go to the doctors. Um, and in the waiting room, my temperature went from 99 degrees to 102 degrees. Um, and they, at that point, put me in a room, started taking vials of blood. We're trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I had no clue. I was scared as shit. I thought my C-section was um, infected and it was causing my whole body just to freak out. I didn't know. So it was mastitis. Um, and my boob was like so red and it was in so much, like I was just in so much pain. So I was um, in the hospital for three days and in those three days I still pumped. Um, and that made me feel like a little better, like I was still able to provide for my daughter, right? Um, and so then I went home and I remember when I went home, it was just like, we went strictly to formula and I remember just feeling like I failed. I felt like I failed as a mom. I felt like I was failing as a partner. Um, and personally I felt so lonely. I felt so just sad. You know, I didn't know what I was doing with my baby. I would watch YouTube videos a day in the life of a, of a mom, as a stay-at-home mom, just to learn how to speak to your baby, how to act, like what to do. 
um, I was just so lost, you know, I felt like I wasn't really connecting with her because I was just so lost in my mind, right? So whenever I started feeling this way, um, and I started kind of feeling it intensify a little bit, and then that's when I started reading up on postpartum depression, I sought out a therapist. And from there, she recommended me, she recommended me to a psychiatrist. And from the psychiatrist, I got put on antidepressants. I was on anti antidepressants for about a week when I realized like, that this ain't the one for me, this is not the drug for me, this is not the pill for me, because it just made me so sleepy. And mind you, you have a newborn, so sleepy is like a new characteristic that you just have. Um, but it made me even more sleepy. And so I, it, in the time of me switching up the meds and still talking to my therapist and the psychiatrist, I had an IUD put in. Okay, I have the copper IUD put in. And the reason why I chose that one is because I was already experiencing, experiencing postpartum depression pretty badly at that time. Um, and I didn't want anything with hormones in it that would push me over the edge to hurt myself. Um, so really quick, I just want to dive in a little deeper of what I was experiencing. So while I was seeing a therapist and a psychiatrist, whenever I was at home with my baby, I was so scared. I want to say scared. Um, because I was scared of my thoughts when I was alone. So my thoughts were full of suicide. Um, I had two different plans of committing suicide. Um, and I remember just feeling like this darkness, like just feeling it, you know? And I remember I would rock my baby to sleep and I could just feel it. And I was just like, you can't have her. And I know that, take it with a grain of salt, you can say and think what you want to think. This is just how I felt and what I was seeing and feeling and hearing. Um, I would see things that would make suicide seem inviting and not so scary. And I would hear things as well. Um, it was just full of darkness. Um, and I expressed this to both my therapist and my psychiatrist, hence the, the antidepressants and the... Um, <clears throat> the um, birth control that I that I chose to go with. Um, so let's keep it moving, shall we? Um, so three and a half months when my, when my baby was three and a half months, am I even saying this right? Anyway, when I went to go get the checkup for the copper IUD to make sure it was placed right, everything was fine, um, they had me take a, a pregnancy test and the doctor made it seem like it was normal like just a follow-up thing. Long story short, I was pregnant again. Um, I was very, very distraught. I was very caught off guard. I felt like this was like a whole movie, like I'm waiting for somebody to pop out and just say it was a joke. Um, but in this time, again, my relationship was not good. And the thought to not keep my baby crossed my mind just because I was already experiencing postpartum depression me and my boyfriend at the time were not doing well. Um, financially, we were not doing well. Mentally, emotionally, I was not doing well. Um, and I was just really scared to be experiencing this postpartum depression with two under two. You know, like, like I just felt like I was drowning. Um, and so I did um, go back and forth on whether or not to keep her. But after speaking with my boyfriend at the time and my mom at the time, I made the choice to keep to keep my little baby. So I kept her um, and throughout my pregnancy with my second child, I was still experiencing postpartum depression. Um, I called the suicide hotline just one time and um, I told them that I had a plan, but that I was going to wait till after the baby was born, that I didn't want to take her out with me. Um, and so I, that was my plan, you know, I was so sad. I, I felt so worthless, so useless. Um, I just didn't want to take my baby with me, you know? Um, and so just throughout that second pregnancy, I was very, very sad. 
Um, but because I still had a baby, you know, she was, uh, she wasn't one yet. Yeah, she wasn't one yet. Um, you don't have much time to wallow in your sadness. Like your baby's hungry. Your baby, you know, just woke up from a nap. Your baby wants to play, you know. I did experience um, the depression throughout my second pregnancy as well. And my relationship was still going through it. We were still going through it. Um, and also in this space and time, I was living with my family. So it was nice to not be so alone all the time and being around people that loved me and that I loved. And so it was really, really nice just not to be surrounded by an overwhelming feeling of having a baby or an overwhelming feeling of being in a relationship that isn't going the best, right? And of course, being pregnant. So um, it was really nice to be with my family at that time. What did I want to show you? My second baby was due May 7th. And on Cinco de Mayo is, is when I started feeling contractions. Um, and so my sister took me to the hospital. I remember taking my last picture of me being pregnant. And um, I, it was just, it was a whirlwind. It was a lot. I was so excited. I was so ready because I wasn't going to be pregnant no more. First off, I was pregnant two years in a row, back to back, like, my body had gone through it, okay? And I was just ready to meet my second baby. I was ready just for our life to begin, like together, right? Um, also, fun fact, at my first OB appointment with my second pregnancy, the first appointment, I told her when I gave birth to this baby, I want to be tied, burned. I want whatever can get me pregnant, like I don't want to be pregnant no more, okay? So I was also excited about that because I just felt like finally I could get a chance to kind of breathe and really focus on the family that I have and possibly even focus on me and what I want and my dreams, you know? Like I think being a mom is incredible, but I think our identity, whether it be wife, daughter, mom, your own identity, like who you are, they are all so important and vital. You, are, you shouldn't be more of something than you are another. Like you and your hopes and dreams are still super important. That's what I told myself, okay? And that's why I decided to make that decision. Um, so she came into this world and this was planned, a planned C-section. And the reason why I chose this route was because the doctors said that it would be healthier. Um, they weren't sure if my uterus would be healed. And quite frankly, I just wanted me and baby healthy. Um, now granted, I still um, did get freaked out by the epidural, still had a panic attack. Um, I still threw up, um, but I kind of knew what to expect, if that makes sense. Even though I still went through the same emotional things in that, in that moment. So then me and baby are healthy, okay? And I remember that night and the next morning feeling like the, this cloud of darkness left. I felt, I felt powerful. I felt strong. I felt happiness, peace, joy. I felt so many positive feelings. And I'm not quite sure what it was that really just moved this darkness away, but I'm so blessed and happy that it did. And I call, so my first baby's name is Penelope, and then my second baby's name is Stella. And I just call Stella like my little angel baby because she ironically delivered me from that depression. And whether it be like she just, like that pregnancy just, or the delivery just kind of, Put my hormones back in check or whatever it was um i would have never experienced that had i decided not to keep her you know i would have never been able to experience her um and so she's just like my little angel baby and i'm so blessed to have her and to have had a healthy pregnancy and healthy delivery after i had her i remember wanting to breastfeed and wanting and having this want to like push through any pain and hurt like i can do this um, I just felt so powerful. I was like, chap nipples, that ain't no big deal. You know what I mean? So I was just like, I can do this. And I also knew she was my last baby. So I was just like, 
I want, I want, I want to do this. I want to try my very hardest to do this. Um, so, um, it didn't work out. <laughs> Breastfeeding did not work out, but I didn't take it as hardly as I did the first time or as hard as I did the first time. Um, just because I gave, I granted myself grace. You know, I have two under two. I have my one, one, one and a half year old. She was um, 13 months old when Stella was born. And my 13 month old who's waking up at the butt crack of dawn while I have her sister, my newborn baby, waking up every hour and a half, every two hours, every 30 minutes, whatever it may be. You know, so I granted myself grace and we switched her to formula as soon as we got home. Um, and also in the hospital, I wasn't producing milk yet um, and she was losing weight. And so we gave her formula in the hospital too. And I have to be honest that once we did that, I did cry just because I was like, oh, I can do this, I can do this, you know, but my boobs weren't doing this. They weren't doing this. So it was, it, and the thing is, it's like, it was okay. It was okay. My babies were healthy. It's okay. So I think something that really helped me out in the, in that's in that moment, even though I wasn't the happiest about that decision, was just granting myself grace. Like, it's okay. It's okay. I think just reflecting on my postpartum depression um, journey, my word of advice for any expecting moms is don't have a plan, first off. We have no control how this baby's gonna come into this world. Um, just let it, just let, just let your baby come. You know and have no expectations um, just there's kids outside I don't know if y'all can hear them um, or there's people outside playing I normally I normally record at night but today I did it a little bit earlier <laughs> um, so yeah that would be my word of advice is do not have a plan be on the no plan plan uh, be on the healthy baby healthy mommy plan whatever that looks like um, and then also if if you are experiencing postpartum depression just know that you aren't alone and please 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 explore every tool available to you to seek help to listen to feel heard um and you got this you got this mama um i'm trying to think of what else i wanted to say um, I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to say. I do this at, at the end of every video. I'm like, is there anything else? Um, I think that's it. I just want you to know that you're so loved. You're not alone. You have so much purpose in this world. And I love you, girl. Thank y'all so much for watching. Um, the next video I have planned is the day in the, in the life of a makeup artist. And I am excited. I think we're gonna. Sh I think I'm gonna fil film this during a music video shoot. I think. Uh, but we gonna see. We gonna see. Um. Okay. Well, thank you guys again so much for watching. Thank you for your support. It means so much to me. I hope y'all have a beautiful, beautiful day, and I'll see y'all soon.